Andreas, I'm desperate to know the nature of reality, and the question that you always begin with is the universe. How did it get here and all of that? So the question fundamentally is, how did the universe begin, or did the universe begin? Did the universe begin? That's a question I've always wondered about, just like you have and most people have. And I realized early in my career as a cosmologist that there's a ver very interesting puzzle associated with that. Lots of people have theories about how the universe began, what state it must be in to start with. Mm -hmm. And they argue with each other, and they one, everyone thinks their theory is the best. There's been huge arguments and sort of insulting images posted on the internet <laughs> and all these kind of things. And it, I always felt these arguments were kind of empty because is the universe really listening? <laughs> so it occurred to me that there's a totally different way that's much better to think about these things, and that's to exploit the idea of equilibrium. We know lots of things that are in equilibrium in the world around us. A glass of water, a, a room full of air can be in equilibrium. Lots of things are in equilibrium, and it means basically physics has taken however it got started and settled it into one particular state. And it stays there. And it stays there. So. What if we could describe the universe as an equilibrium system? Then the state of the universe could be determined not by someone's theory of the state, but by the laws of physics, taking whatever it was and turning it into a particular state. So the laws of physics would determine what state the universe would be found in. I knew that was an exciting idea long ago, but it was very hard for many years to imagine how you could have a theory that actually looked like the universe around us that had those properties. Mm -hmm. All that changed when we discovered the cosmic acceleration about 10 years ago or so, when we realized maybe to understand the universe better, we need to introduce something called the cosmological constant. It turns out that if there really is a cosmological constant describing, dri driving this acceleration, then you actually get um, a nice equilibrium picture in the future of the universe. So, so, so you take the acceleration, put it together in your equations, the answer is at the end you reach equilibrium. How, how does acceleration reach equilibrium at the end? The acceleration, if it's described by a cosmological constant, you add a term to Einstein's equations that um, quickly comes to dominate. Mm -hmm. When that term comes to dominate, um, by arguments along the lines that Hawking made with black holes, you actually have a temperature, a Hawking temperature, Gibbons Hawking temperature in this case. You have a horizon. Um, you have an entropy associated with that horizon. And, and Gibbons and Hawking showed that that entropy is actually maximal. So, so of all the entropy, if you put black holes in... in so so the, the state you reach when the cosmological constant dominates the equations is called the sitter space. If you take the sitter, pure the sitter space and throw junk in it, like black holes or anything else, the entropy actually goes down. Um, because of what happens to the horizon. As, 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 as the space then evolves, the stuff kind of spreads out and gets pushed up to the horizon, and you return to the equilibrium state and the entropy goes back up. So it has all these properties, a temperature, a maximal entropy, a, a, it's a state you achieve when you wait long enough and let the system settle. So, so everything, every feature is one of an equilibrium system. What, are you driving to an equilibrium or you're starting with an equilibrium? So, so that's good, good, yeah. So do you, so what do you do with that equilibrium? So right now we're driving towards it. Yeah. Now, every equilibrium system has fluctuations. A glass of water has some probability that all the, yeah. all the molecules will rise, sure. will rise leaving a vacuum below. Um, there's all kinds of fluctuations in an equilibrium system. And in my theory of, of cosmology, we, the Big Bang, is a fluctuation from that equilibrium state, the de Sitter space, and we're just returning to equilibrium now. So, so we're, we're riding this Big Bang back to equilibrium once the cosmological constant truly dominates and creates that de Sitter space yeah. again. And, and as, uh, as space expands, cosmological constant gets more and more important because there's more and more space and the cosmological constant is, is constant within each uh, uh, exactly. volume of space. So all the other matter dilutes yeah. as the cosmos expands, the cosmological constant space. doesn't, right. so it, so eventually it dominates, dominates, eventually dominates, okay. and as it dominates, we approach the right. equilibrium. Right. But, but you said we started in equilibrium too? And so then, 
Right. So, so, so we start with just a look at now, and we look like we're approaching equilibrium. And then how do you build that into a theory of cosmology? Right. right. Um, well, the natural picture is that, that the equilibrium, the sitter space, is the fundamental state. And everything we know is a fluctuation around it. And so in, in that picture, the Big Bang, as we know it, the early stages of the universe, the formation of nuclei, all these things, all started with a fluctuation in, that, in, the, ra in the thermal radiation in the sitter space. And that fluctuation is a quantum fluctuation. That's a quantum fluctuation. And that occurs whenever it occurs. It can be very frequently or enormously infrequently. But when it occurs, that's what's the little seed. Is that a seed? It's a little seed. That grows through the inflation process that creates right. our universe. And that's where inflation plays a critical role. Because you could look at an equilibrium system and ask, what's the most probable fluctuation? And we could say, well, what about you and me? If we were part of an equilibrium system, well, we'd, it'd be much more likely that you and I would fluctuate just on our own, yeah. without the ship, without right. the ocean, right, without right. anything else. Right. It's much easier to just have a small fluctuation sure. than a big one. Right. So, so that's known actually as the Boltzmann brain problem, because if you take it to the limit, maybe it's just your brain. <laughs> why, why? Who needs more than that? Your right. brain, who thi which thinks, thinks that, yeah. there's a cosmos out there. Right. But, but, and so, so it's known as the Boltzmann brain problem. It's a classic problem. Of, of thinking about the universe as an equilibrium state. But you get around that because your, your fluctuation is a seed. It's not the whole universe. Exactly. And that seed is able to generate the universe. And the key there is inflation. Because what inflation can do is take a small seed and make a big universe. And that's sort of realizing the original, in the early days of inflation, that was the intuition that inflation could take a little thing and make a whole universe. That's got to be good. <laughs> um, it's run into trouble because lots of the realizations of inflation have, have had problems with infinities and, and all kinds of um, disastrous technical issues. And, but this picture, the equilibrium picture, actually realizes the original idea of inflation, that, uh, that inflation is good because it can take a little thing and make a whole universe. And that's what happens in this picture.